When it became clear that we would no longer be able to meet in person because of the COVID-19 outbreak, it was thought that, well, for a few weeks, we'll just record the liturgy like we normally do. Friends, you and I both know it has been more than just a few weeks. Following sound Lutheran practice and the recommendations of Bishop Eaton and Bishop Philibus of the Lutheran World Federation, we all started to fast from Holy Communion. The implications of that are far more than partaking in a church ritual. Not only are we fasting, which is a fancy way of saying refraining from or going without, not only are we fasting from Holy Communion, literally being in community with each other, but we are also fasting from the Holy Sacrament of Christ's incarnational body and blood. It has been hard, to say the least. As you know, every day at noon and at 6 p.m., I join the parish as a whole in prayer. In the past few weeks, I have come to struggle with God over what we have been offering in online worship. I have prayed for guidance and worship to shepherd us through these perilous times because we all know that it is in time of great anguish that faith flourishes. So how can I best serve you now? The liturgy is an embodied event that requires the assembled people of God. Just as the word became flesh and lived among us, so too are we engaged in our real bodies to experience the word of God, Jesus Christ himself, through the senses of worship, smell, taste, touch, seeing and hearing with the sacramental gifts of God given through Christ namely baptism, confession absolution, and Holy Communion. I'd like you to listen to what Father Arthur Peephorn, a uh, noteworthy Lutheran pastor and uh, scholar of the Eucharist, uh, had to say about this. As the bond of charity and the sacrament of unity, the Holy Communion is the family meal of the family of God. For this reason, the presence of all the members of all the families of the parish through the whole service commends itself." End quote. In other words, Holy Communion and a shared experience in the Word is the point of worship and since we are currently fasting from Holy Communion, both in the sacramental sense and in the physical body aspect, worship itself cannot be carried on as it was before, nor can it pretend to be carried on like it was before just on camera, but with a few printed out pictures of people on paint sticks in the pews. Therefore, I have decided that in the coming weeks, we will periodically send out short videos of prayer in the sanctuary, Sunday school activities, as well as videos from our fellow parishioners. Some examples could include teachers reading to the church as a whole through Zoom. Show us the day in the life of your family home. Teach us a new practical skill, such as sewing, baking, wood making, wood carving, or farming. Tell us what has been your highs and lows during quarantine. Ask a child or grandparent, where do you see Christ? We will be covering the seniors' graduation and blessing of the quilts. What else would you like to hear from the seniors graduating? Every Sunday, we will continue to have the readings, the sermon, prayers, and a benediction. It is my hope that in this way, we will be reconnected to each other and remain steadfast in the marks of the church, namely that we are revering the holy sacraments 
living in the word, and sharing in our suffering. It is also my sincere hope that you will find a renewed interest in spicing up your prayer life and spiritual disciplines at home. Indeed, dear church, we are in this together, so let us be in constant prayer together. Good morning and blessed Mother's Day. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me as we pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verses 55 through 60. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of, the, of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5 and 15 through 16. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. 
Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my prey and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Our second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 to 14. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know the way where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Perhaps you too have noticed that a lot of our lectionary readings throughout the Easter season have been typical funeral readings. Psalm 23 from last week. Today's Gospel from John is perhaps the most used Gospel at a funeral. 
And it makes sense, right? The only other time we light the Paschal candle, wear white, and wrap our loved ones in white cloth is at baptisms, Easter, the 50 days of Easter, and funerals. Those three are connected. Baptism, Easter, funerals. At first glance, this passage from John's Gospel seems to be one of the few direct times Jesus explicitly talks about heaven, or at least our common image of heaven. It is reassuring and comforting to know that Christ leads the way for us to be welcomed into paradise to live with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is not at all wrong to think about heaven in the sense of it being beyond your wildest dreams. No waiting lines at Valley Fair, completely forgiven, the ability to fly, all you can eat, anything, with the perfect resurrected bod. Let your imaginations run wild. I mean, heck, that is what our youth will be doing this week when they are given the chance to build their dream house in heaven. That is the recommendations from Augsburg Fortress. However, heaven is nothing at all unless it means being in the intimate presence of God. Heaven is where God indwells within you, and you are dead to the old Adam, your old Eve, and become a new creation with Christ. This is why wherever God is, there is your heaven. Jesus Christ embodies in himself the perfect fusion of heaven and earth and the mystery of the incarnation, meaning the act of God becoming human and God in Jesus Christ. We have already encountered the life of heaven through Jesus. In other words, the point is not for us to go to heaven, but for the life of heaven to come to earth. This, after all, was the Jewish hope for the Messiah. This is what Jesus is trying to impart upon his followers, this overwhelmingly joyous yet realistic approach to life in this world. Jesus does not beat around the bush. He knows at this point in the gospel that he is going to be falsely condemned, crucified, and die. Jesus acknowledges that indeed every single person in all creation will meet their own death at their own time. But the good news is that we will be resurrected and dwell with God in eternity. All others who dwell within the body of Christ will be reunited. And that alone makes us shout, Alleluia. Therefore, we put our trust in God, who revealed God's self most thoroughly on the cross for the sins of the world, but overcame them in the battle of death, so that in Christ we may live because he is the way, he is the truth, and alleluia, he is the life. Amen. Jesus taught his disciples many things. Don't be sad or worried, he said. Believe in God and in me. God's house in heaven is so big that everyone can have a room. I'm going there to get your rooms ready. Later, I'll come back to take you to God's house. You know the way to where I'm going. Thomas and Philip looked confused. What way do you mean? they asked. Jesus said, I'm the way to know God. Because you know me, you know God too. I've taught you about life with God and the good things God wants you to do. Pray, ask me for anything, and I'll help you do it. Thomas and Philip smiled. 
We can follow you and do what you ask us to do. You are our way to heaven. We can live in God's house too. Hey there everyone, Pastor Emily here. I'm just going to show you what we have available for the children to learn this week. First, we have this A Room of My Own. It's one of the packets that are available in the, the, in the Dropbox. Also, this 3D room, which is really cool. You follow the instructions and it will tell you what is going on. Basically, uh, the kids can create their own little um, rooms of what heaven would be like. And also uh, these wonderful pictures again from the Spark House. Also, because tomorrow's Mother's Day, um, or today when you're reading it, um, we are uh, going to be handing out these All About Mom things or Grandma. So um, come pick these up. It'll be lots and lots of fun. There's other goodies there too. All right, bye. A few announcements. Parents are guardians. Are you in need of mutual support and admiration? How about a boost of energy from your old pals at church? Then join us for our Parent Fellowship Hour on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. via Zoom. A link is sent out to you via email. This leads me to the second announcement. If you have been experiencing email problems with the church or... If you have not been getting our mass emails from either one of the secretaries or myself, then please let us know by calling the Bethany office Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., or email me at pastorstelling at sirentel.net. We are working on updating our email systems. If you or someone you know would be interested in praying over the new crop season, let me know. Uh, next week is traditionally the time of year when a pastor goes out and blesses farms and farmers. And as we know, um, it is our local dairy farmers and really farmers of all sort, uh, sorts uh, that uh, run the economy of our area. And so um, they deserve our uh, sincere prayers, and blessings. The Bethany Council will meet this upcoming Tuesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. I want to show you what an authorization form looks like um, for the electronical online giving through Simply Giving at uh, Thrivent Financial. Um, it is available at both uh, drop boxes, uh, at both churches, you can email me or contact the church office for this form. But basically, at, in the drop boxes, it's this simple form. Um, you just fill out um, your information, and we keep it securely um, at the church, and um, it is um, all handled by Wayne Weiberg, um, or who is the secretary of Bethany, or who he's the treasurer of Bethany, or Jackie, who is the treasurer of Pilgrim. So we ask that you continue to give, and uh, an e the easiest way would be to give online. At this time, accept the benediction, which is God's blessing. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, who blesses you now and forever. Amen.